Hey folks, welcome to the channel. In my Fantasy Challenge build, I wanted to go a little different direction. I wanted it to represent the channel. So, here's what we're going to build. The Shark Knife. And of course, it's going to be Mosaic Damascus. And we're going to have fun building the fittings. Let's get into it. Here's our starting stack. You can see the black strip here. Let's get it welded up. I'm welding up the corners of this billet, putting a little handle on it, and we're going to get it in the forge. After a little bath and kerosene to aid in the forge weld, it goes in the forge to get heated up to 2200 degrees. The Damascus I'm going to be making is meant to replicate fish scales. The graphic in the corner is going to help you visualize what's happening at each step. Here we're starting with this stack. It's pretty much forge welded now and it's one solid piece. Now we're going to start drawing it out with the drawing dies and we want something like this. Remember folks, the pattern you're seeing is on the end of the billet, not on the top. Although it looks quick in the video, each one of these passes takes about five minutes. Just a couple of seconds to forge it in the press, but a couple of minutes to heat it up. Now that we've got the billet in this shape, we're going to put it in the squaring dies. That's going to knock in the corners, and that will make the billet look something like this. After a couple of heats with the squaring dies, we got it nice and square. Now we're going to rotate it 90 degrees. And now we're going to reforge it flat, and that's going to put these C's in it. Here's that bar cut up, restacked, re-welded, and ready to get back in the forge. Right now, we've got this pattern. We're going to forge weld all the layers together and draw them out. After forge welding, we've drawn out this stack a little bit again, squared it up, now we're going to rotate it 45 degrees, and we're going to re-square it again. This is going to move that dark black line and kind of curve it across the billet. When we're done re-squaring this, it'll look something like this. Here's the bar after our second forging session. Remember, the end looks like this. Now we're going to take that bar, cut it up into four equal pieces, rotate them, and make it look like this. Now it's time to forge weld those back together, drawn out into a long bar, and we're actually going to repeat this. We want a really nice fine pattern with small scales.
I put on the one inch kiss blocks here just so I can get the billet squared up exactly to one inch all the way down. Then we're going to cut it up again into four. Let's do an update on our pattern. We already four weighed it once to get this pattern. Now we're gonna four weigh it again and that's gonna make this pattern even finer and look like this. Yes folks, we're gonna be repeating this one more time. We're going to draw it out, four-way it again, and that should give a scale small enough that it'll look good on our knife. So here's our final four-way. That's gonna take us from this to this. Since the pattern is on the end of the billet, we need to forge this into a rectangular shape and we're gonna be slicing this up at 35 degree angles. So that's what we're getting ready for. We've pretty much got this billet forged where we want it. Now we're gonna switch gears. I wanna do another stack here. This is so we can approximate teeth on the edge of our knife. So what I've done here is taken five pieces of 1080, stack them up, and five pieces of 15 and 20, stack those up, and then put those two layers on top of each other to make this billet. We're gonna twist this to create our teeth pattern. Now I'm just trying to get this into a long, thin, square bar that I can twist in the twisting machine. I've got this billet down to three quarter inch. Now it's gonna go in the twisting machine. I got a foot pedal to operate this, so it gives a few spins and that'll twist it up for us. As different parts of the billet cool at different rates, that affects the amount that it each part twists. So here I'm just using some Windex. That'll cool areas that are too hot and are twisting too fast, so it'll slow them down. So let's take a look at where we are so far. So here is the billet. It's been re-squared twice uh, and I've sliced it up on 35 degree angles. Also numbered all of them just to make sure I knew which ones go where. 
So now, because remember our pattern is on the end, we're going to lay these out. I'm actually going to flip these over because I've already actually um, done acid on one side because remember the scales all point in one direction. So they will be, let's get this in frame, like this. Now I screwed up a little bit when I did the last one and somehow got it flipped around. So this one, the scales are going the other way. So I'm going to have to slice this one and trim it here just so all the scales go in that direction. But that's not a big deal. So that's going to be our scale pattern. Then we'll put those, we'll weld all these together with a mild steel on either side just to sandwich them all. So that's going to be our next operation. So after that's all welded up, we're going to put an edge bar on here. And I want it to look like teeth. So you saw me forge weld this guy and twist it. Um, I'm not thrilled with how uneven the twist is. It's nice and tight here, but it's a little wider here and here. So I'm actually going to end up reheating this, um, heating up the end, twist it, and heat up this end and twist it just to get this a little tighter so they, they look a little more even. And that's going to, I mean, and it'll be a thin little bar underneath, and that's going to act like my teeth, and hopefully that looks okay. Um, you know, they're kind of, it'll be black, white, black, white, so they'll kind of look like teeth. So now I weld up all those tiles onto some sacrificial steel just to keep them all together and forge weld them up. That'll give us a nice solid billet and that'll be the basis for our knife. Hey folks, I want to take this opportunity to remind you that this is a challenge among a whole bunch of YouTube channels. Now, I'm one of the judges, along with four other channels, but the other 20 channels are all competing for your votes. So it's important that you vote for the channel and the build that you like the best. I have a link to the voting survey down in the description, so make sure you go and vote and watch all of the builds. I also want to take this opportunity to thank our sponsors. These guys are donating some amazing prizes for the viewer portion of this challenge. So stay tuned, you'll see an announcement of who the winners are. And thanks to these guys. Links to all them down in the description as well. And now the tedious task of grinding off all that sacrificial steel. Then we're going to take our teeth bar and we're going to weld that to the side and reforge that into our final billet that we're going to shape the knife out of. Anytime you have an edge bar, that has to match the curve of the blade. You can't just cut the blade out of it. So here I'm forging the blade to shape. Time to reference our pattern again, just to make sure we have the right dimensions. Now I'm using the press to put the ricasso in and start to draw out the tang. All right, so here it is after forging. Um, the uh, camera overheated, so you guys missed a little bit of it, but the edge bar is here. Remember, this blade is going to have a downswept um, 
uh, curve to it. It's much longer than originally planned, so the blade, um, if you go like in a straight line, is about 16 inches. If you were to, yeah, it's, yeah, it's about 16, just over uh, 16 inches. So now what I'm going to do is surface grind the edge because I want to see exactly where that edge bar is because I want it to be a constant thickness. I don't want to start grinding any of the profile because I don't want this to look narrower in one spot and thicker in another. So let's surface grind it and see where we're at. So here it is after surface grinding and a test edge. Turned out pretty nice. The uh, the edge bar is pretty even. I like it. So now we can just take a little bit off this edge bar. I see it's just a little. I'll have to just drop the point a little bit, but uh, it looks good. Okay, so let's talk about the design a little bit. So there's going to be a bevel, a big bevel here. So a pretty decent bevel on both sides. Okay, there's going to be three notches. These are going to be kind of this part's going to get removed. I was going to put a big dorsal fin on the top of the blade, but that just seems problematic. So the dorsal fin is actually going to be part of the guard. So the way it'll be something like this more of a point here and then down here there's another a pectoral fin that comes down something like this and then into the handle and then this so this is going to be kind of straight and it'll be a little bit over so it's kind of hover over the blade and there'll be a blank spot under it so I think that's going to look kind of cool it might actually go to here and the blade is going to fit into the guard so, uh, I also want a false edge on the top, and the false edge is going to just meet up with this first one. So the first thing we're going to do is grind this false edge to be about that depth. So here I am at the mill, putting in those notches on the top of the blade. Yeah, I could have done them with the file, but hey, I have a mill. Now it's time to put the bevel on the knife. This is just our pre-heat treat bevel, so it's only about 80%. So here it is after initial grind. Um, you watch me do the uh, these little notches in here. So pretty happy with it. It's a pretty mean looking blade with this forward curve uh, and this point on it. Uh, so it's really cool. I'm looking forward to seeing it finished. Now it's time to do the heat treat process and then final grinding. Well, as what happens sometimes in knife making, things don't always go as planned. So the edge bar, I guess, was not forge welded as well as I thought. During the quench, it developed a little crack here and then, um, I wouldn't even say a crack, a tiny little seam. And then after temper, uh, it was a visible crack in the seam. So I just snapped it off. And now we're going to have to make a narrower blade and maybe a little shorter. So, they always say, bladesmiths don't make mistakes, we just make smaller knives.
Well, on the plus side, I did snap this just to see what the grain looks like, and it is nice and powdery. So, the heat treat was spot on. So now I just spent some time reprofiling this knife, making it a little smaller. It actually works out really well, and I like the final outcome. So here's the blade after final grinding. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, grinds are nice and even. Comes to a pretty fine edge. Um, I've never done a false edge that goes this way. Usually they swoop the other way. So uh, it was an interesting one to do. Um, now I just got a hand sand this and then we'll start on the guard. So before I do anything else, I figured I would check the, the hardness of this. So let's give it a shot. And here goes. So that one says 59 and a half. Let's do it one more time. Yep, yeah, 59 and a half exactly. All right, 59 and a half HRC for this blade. So here's the blade all sanded to 800. It's come out really nice. I like the lines on it. So now it's time to turn our focus to the guard here. So the way I'm going to end up doing this is I'm going to do this central piece here. Um, slot the uh, slot the guard, fit the knife, and then take off a bunch of material here. And then I'm probably going to end up welding on these guys afterwards. So we're going to start with this, which is quite thick, because you'll notice this has a, the knife is inset into the guard. So we're going to do that. So we need a pretty thick piece, but most of this is going to get ground off. All right, so let's go to the mill and slot it. So I wanted to show you guys where I'm at with the guard. So I've got the guard slotted. You can see that um, I've slotted it this way so that it kind of goes up here. If I can get it back on. <laughs> um, and then the fins, I've milled a top slot so the fins are going to go inside. I'll just put them, they'll be like, like this, and it'll kind of hover over there, and then the bottom fin will be here. Then what I'm going to do is, uh, I need to take this down a little bit, but then I'm going to weld in these, and then contour the whole thing so it matches. Time to work on the handle here. I'm going to be using this piece of tiger maple because I think that's going to look pretty good against the uh, shark theme. So we're just going to drill out the hole for the tang. It's time to put my maker's mark in, get that all nice and etched, and then we're going to etch the blade. I 
I decided the fittings and the handle should be blue. So here I'm using hot salt and we're going to immerse the guard and the pommel in here to turn them blue. And I'm just going to dye the handle blue as well. So I think that should look really cool. Are you guys ready to see this all put together? 